All right, we are live. Um, let's see here. We'll get some people in here and we'll get rocking and rolling. As soon as, okay, we got 21 people in here. So, all right, welcome everybody. Tonight we've got the audio figured out. We've got uh, the video figured out. And uh, we won't have a fiasco like we did last time. The whole uh, live stream thing can be a little difficult sometimes, but we got it ironed out and we're ready to talk about lake of the woods um so it's snowing here at my house horribly is it snowing up there uh, a little bit not bad okay what are the what are the conditions look like out there <clears throat> well we've scaved all that snow as well as expected joe yeah i mean we're we're pretty worried pretty concerned um got through it got our plowing what we could do done with the size of vehicles we can put out there um yeah no it's it's it we're, we're sitting okay we don't have well i sent you some videos and some pictures today we don't have any flooding what you know not bad flooding anyways to speak of um yeah roads looking good we've been able to work on it a little bit here the last couple of days since the snow quit it's everything's looking better how much how much ice you looking at down there Today, we were finding anywhere in that 13 to 14 inch range. We had a couple spots or maybe 15, but you always got to remember it's only as good as your least amount of ice that you find. And I, so I'm calling it between 13 and 14. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, have you had any wind up there to cause any drifts or anything or? Uh, not too bad. It blew a little bit today, um, but it wasn't bad. Sounds like we're going to get some wind. Uh, we have all well, we had some wind over the weekend, but sounds like we're going to get some wind here coming in maybe Friday night, I think it said, Joe, right? Yeah, Friday um, afternoon. Friday yeah, night. so we'll see what that does, but that's a long ways out yet. That can change a little too. Right, yeah, it looks like it could blow pretty good next week and be really, really, really cold. So um, we, we don't <laughs> mind cold right now. We need to make some ice. Right. What? Uh, how's the bite looking up there? Um, it seems like you get a good morning or a good afternoon right now, right, Joel? Yeah, that's what I would say. You know, it's one or the other. Um, it's not, I wouldn't call it lights out, but everybody's catching some fish. Okay. You know? So, like, uh, I was up there on Friday night, we fished, and we had the pan optics out, and, man, we marked, like, 50 fish, and it seems like as soon as you... Soon, yep, as soon as you went to move the bait, um, they were gone. But I think that's, uh, if there is a, a drawback or a downfall to the uh, live scope, I think that would be it, is the frustration of seeing all those, and big marks too, big, big marks, and then just can't get them to bite. But So so we talked a little bit this morning on the phone, and uh, you said there's a lot of people that are, are uh, really nervous, and they're just really um ultra concerned about flooding we've got a few more people in here now just just talk about what it looks what the conditions are up there right now just a little bit more um you can put in whenever you want joe but i would say our conditions on our ice that we check and we maintain right now are very good um honestly on our roads and our trails we don't have if there's a slush pocket here and there, we're plowing around it just fine. Um, everything has been pretty good. And honestly, I'm very surprised. I was, well, you and I talked, we were pretty concerned when the snow was coming. Um, I've heard other places around the lake that have had some flooding, but we're sitting good. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard anything about, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, War Road yet this week, so. Uh, probably um, probably know something more about that this week. I'm going to try to fix my glowing face here. Um, just had a question. And can you, you can see the chat, can't you, Marshall? No, I can. How do I? Okay. we. I'll just read it to you. That way we don't uh, okay. have a no problem. We don't but, want to screw anything up. Uh, one, one guy's asking uh, pickup trucks yet. No, I'm not expecting any pickup trucks if, if we do, when we'll probably going to be starting half tons a day after Christmas, just because of the snow load. 
Um, we want the road to be right when we start. We don't want accidents. So if, if I would say the earliest we're going to let pickups and half tons go is going to be the day after Christmas, if we do that. So stay tuned. Are you, uh, are you open on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? We are open on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Joe and Tyler um, will be here. I'll be around. Um, we are, if you want to take your kids, 18 and under, fishing with us on Christmas Eve. We have a limited number of fish houses that we're going to put out and be ready, and we still have a couple left. Um, 18 and under, fish for free, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, as long as they're with an adult, paying adult. Oh, uh, and um, I was kind of rude. Why don't you introduce uh, your, be your left-hand man there. This is Joe. Um, he's new with us this year. This is his first season with us. You guys have met Jim and John. They've been with us for quite a while. We brought Joe on this year, working out great. He's got a lot of experience. He came from Mille Lacs. He's done a lot of work there. Um, happy, real happy. We're getting along great. Why don't you, if you don't, if you don't mind, Joe, why don't you uh, kind of introduce yourself and just just uh, break yourself up a little bit? <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess I've been fishing my whole life and done the whole ice thing on Lax Lake for thirty years, and decided to come up here the last couple of years, and it's great up here. Marshall's great to work for. It's a great outfit, and I don't know. It's just I love to fish, so. So when when you when you bring up uh, Malax a little bit, what 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 are some of the comparisons or what are some of the differences or you know just um, what's the big difference between Lake of the Woods and Malax or is there one? Well, there's no saugers on Malax. Um, you know, there's a lot more big fish on Malax. I would say number wise, you see a lot more of that twenty to twenty six inch range. You know, I would say that's kind of your, the big difference right there is no saugers and bigger numbers of big fish. So what, what do you think contributes to that difference? Honestly, I, I'm not real sure. I don't know if it's just the smaller lake and that many number of fish that they're just kind of trapped in those certain areas or or what the real reason is for it. Okay, so let's say uh, let's say you're a pike fisherman. Um, is, do you see a lot of difference? Do you catch a lot of pike on Mille Lacs? Uh, Mille Lacs can be very good for pike fishing, but it's I would say Lake of the Woods is top tops it. Right. What What's the uh, um, how, how long you been fishing Lake of the Woods? You said two years. Yeah, I've been up here. This is my second winter. Okay. All right. What uh, What are some of the things you like about working up on Lake of the Woods? Uh, honestly, the people I, in general, I just, the people that come here, I, it just seems like a better, uh, different demographic of people that come up here versus the Mille Lacs Lake area. And that's probably my favorite part is the people that come up. What, uh, what is your second favorite thing to do besides, uh, uh, fishing? Oh, I love to hunt. Okay. Is there anything in particular you like to, you like to hunt? I, I love my ducks. Those Have you... Have you duck hunted Lake of the Woods yet? I have not. It's it's on my list. It is on my okay. list. Maybe next year. Okay. Did you? Uh, had you? Uh, did, were you up here before the freeze, or did you wait till afterwards? Uh, no, nope, I didn't come up until December fifth. Okay. Okay. So I was just wondering if maybe you're doing some scouting when you're up here. No, nope, I haven't. So, maybe okay. next year though. Okay. What? Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people that come up to Lake of the Woods. You know, obviously walleye is king. We all know that. You know, that's that's kind of the main draw. Um, you got smallmouth. You got, I mean, throughout the year, uh, walleye, smallmouth, sauger, sturgeon, pike, musky, um, perch fishing. What do you think? Kind of the difference between Lake of the Woods and Mille Lacs would be for perch. Well, right now, I guess if you had to pick one of the two to go perch fishing on, I'd go to Lake of the Woods. Uh, the perch numbers on Mille Lacs are just way down right now. They're really on the small side. They're just slowly starting to rebound. Um, I don't think either one's good for great numbers, but I, I would, if you're looking for a big one, I'd come to Lake of the Woods. So have, have you been seeing any perch coming in, in the uh, into the cleaning shacks at all this so far this winter? Yeah, we've been seeing one here, one there. You know, it's... 
it's hard to target them. Um, your spring and fall, it's a little easier to target perch versus, you know, summer and, you know, through your winter. If I had to pick one time of the year to come up here and target perch, it would be October, fall. They're concentrated, you know, in a few areas. Okay, so if someone wanted to go to the Lake of the Woods and, and target perch, what are you going to uh, recommend that they use for, like, baits for, uh, um, you know, a electronics? Small blue, a small blue jig and a crappie minnow is what I throw on, um, or pink. But to me, perch, I don't know, for some reason, if I'm going to go sit and fish for a perch, I'm going to throw something with some blue on it. You're going to let it sit? You're going to be aggressive? What are you going to do? Kind of going to let it sit because they just like to nibble, nibble, suck, suck. Okay. You know? Any uh, specific area? <coughs> excuse me. Look at this raspy cough. Any any uh, specific area you're going to look for? Uh, you're going to look for them up on the edges of rock structure, reefs. Um, <laughs> you know, in the fall, they, they'll... They'll congregate around them. Okay. You usually find them kind of mixed in with walleyes a little bit too? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Um, but sometimes, I mean, you'll stumble on them and you'll just be on a school of perch. And I've I've had days where I've just, you know, done really well with them. But, yeah, they're in with the walleyes. But you got to – they they tend to be that more structure orientated. Do you find uh... – do you find that you're on them for a little bit and you got to try to stay on top of them and keep moving or do you just kind of sit and wait? Um, well, probably if you really want to be on top of them, you probably should be moving a little bit. Generally we're fishing walleyes. So we kind of sit and wait for them to come back around again. You know, what, uh, what kind of, <clears throat> what kind of depths do you kind of see them mostly? Is there a depth um, range? Where we fish, you know, the fall stuff, it's that 18 to 24 foot stuff on the edge of them rock lines, you know, where the mud meets the rocks is where you like it, you know. Okay. Um, but not, I shouldn't say that because a lot of the reefs on out where we fish a lot, where the mud meets, meets the rocks is like 80 or like 30 feet. But that shallower stuff where the mud meets the rocks and the gra or the gravel meets the rocks right there. Okay. Got a question for you. What size lures do you guys recommend for walleye and what colors? I like pink. And then, you know, uh, eight ounce buckshot, a pink buckshot's probably my favorite thing. If I had to pick one, it'd be I'll take a pink or glory. Awesome. Do we get got you back? Yep. Yeah, my my internet must have uh, done something goofy here. Um, I think we missed you. Can you uh, say that one more time? So anything I I like like what Joel said, pink. Um, but I'm a I like like glow red buckshot. Um, something with a little bit of gold on one side or the other is always good. Are you tipping? Are you tipping those lures at all with minnow heads? Or I like when I'm jigging. I like to jig with like a uh, half a shiner, whatever. If I'm gonna dead stick it, it's gonna be with either a rainbow or a the biggest chub I can find in the box. You know, okay. and that typically typically that chub would be alive. Yes. Okay. Hooked in the tail on a red hook works real good. Uh, what's the biggest perch you've caught? Mine was two years ago. It was 16 and a half inches caught in the World River in a deep hole. That's a giant. Yeah, that it would be a giant. That's a giant. Um, the biggest ones I have, and they are, I have two of them, and they are 14 and a half and 15 inches. 16 and a half, that's almost That's, that's, that's unbelievable. Huge. Yeah, that's huge. I um, got a 16 and a quarter and a 15 and a half up here last year. Really? Yep. I'd like oh, to see pics of that sixteen and a half. That that's a big that's a big perch. Wow. I would you know that's honestly probably my favorite uh 
fish to eat out of cold water that or or uh pike is right up there too honestly um you know it's but it's, it's just really hard to get on perch consistently um up there shanner guy says yeah you guys walk on water up there we sure do we sure do uh Dwayne says renting a shack from you on the 30th with full-size trucks be able to drive out by then you're kind of talking about christmas um you know the 30th of this month if it's a half ton Dwayne, very likely um depending on snow load and what we get here in the next week three quarter tons i don't know yet but i'm thinking half tons will be good after christmas i don't but like I said, it's all depends on the snow load we get here in the next few days. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm just going to look here. Do we have uh, any snow on the forecast? Again, I think <clears throat> there's a little bit here and there, you know, but it, it all, it's, it's real hard to judge it because <laughs> now we have 16 inches of snow on the ice. So it's, I mean, yeah, we're going to have 10 below zero. But we're not gonna make ice like we would when we uh when we would have ten below zero and three inches of snow, you know. Yeah, we could have we could have definitely skipped skipped out on this uh, on the snow. Skipped out sure. on about sixteen inches of it. Right. I I will say though, um, was up in the angle all weekend, and I was really surprised I didn't run into more slush than I did. I really thought I was going to, and I only ran into two very small uh, slush spots. So that I was pleasantly surprised. So. Uh, Brian says, oops, meant 12 years ago when a buddy down, a buddy down a ways from me thought it was a wall. I should have mounted it, didn't quite know how big it was. Oh, yeah, I would say if I caught a 16 inch and a half, 16 and a half inch perch, it would be getting mounted. It would be mounted. <laughs> For sure. I was going fishing today, but it was 44 when I woke up, so I went back to bed. Uh, 44 is too, too cold for uh, people in Florida. Oh, yeah. So... Um, anything, anything else, uh, going on up there that's real noteworthy right, right now? <laughs> um, you know, we're going, we're getting stuff going, you know, this week's kind of our get set up for the busy week after Christmas. Um, the big thing is I know there's been a lot of stuff out there, Instagram, social media about flooding and this and that, and. We're not. All, our stuff right now looks good. Um, we don't have any flooding to speak of, really. Um, we're fortunate, I guess, because I know there are some that are. but And things get a little exaggerated on social media sometimes. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Everything gets exaggerated on social media. Uh, the Adventures of Team BLT says, heading up next week, bring on the cold. If you guys have any questions, uh, make sure you throw them in the in the in the uh chat here we'll we'll get them up and, and get them answered <coughs> um you got any availability right now how are you looking that way uh we are sitting i think we have our suite is available for new year's weekend we had a cancellation um so that is a four person minimum on that and that could go lodging or package or non-package right now um other than that i think our weekend availability is pretty full out to about that second week of january but we have a little bit of midweek left um the end of january february we got some openings yep. sleepers are pretty busy out until the middle of the end of january also but there's some scattered availability i mean i'll give a call you know hey what's uh what's your email someone's asking for it again I can't remember it off the top of my head. Lake Road Lodge at mncable.net. Okay, let me get that put in there. Lake Road Lodge at mncable.net. And I suppose I could put up. Um, let me get your uh, phone number on the screen here, too. 218 634. Two three three six. Twenty three thirty six. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. Um. All right. 
So usually, yeah, I mean, we're we're a little early this year. I mean, you know, how what are we a week ahead of time about? Well, we're about a week ahead of time, but with this, the thing is, we're about a week ahead of time, but with the snow we have, um, honestly, I think we could be a bit behind schedule by the time we really want to get to New Year's weekend. So if a guy the is... The biggest question of the week is, sorry to interrupt you, the biggest question of the week is, when are we putting wheelhouses out? Right. Um, I... Me personally, I'm not going to set any wheelhouses with us probably until closer to New Year's. If not, maybe that, probably that weekend, maybe. We just got to wait and see what next week brings. Let's let's say a guy uh, is planning on coming up there and, and fishing out of a portable right now. Snowmobile or four-wheeler or what? If you got a snowmobile, I'd say bring it. Um there's guys getting around with wheelers, but from when I was out there today, we were pulling houses. They were struggling a little bit. Um, I would definitely say chains um, or tracks. Uh, I think if you got chains and you got a ranger or a side by side, you're still going to get around. You just gotta you gotta watch where you're going. You know. Mm -hmm. What's the? Uh, is there any pressure ridges around? Or we don't have many problems with pressure ridges right now at all. Okay. How how uh how far out is your farthest house right now? How deep is it? Uh well, thirty feet, two miles. <clears throat> you, oh, you're out two miles already, huh? Just about, yep. Yeah. Okay. We just set them today. How did they end up? It was they did okay. It was a decent day. <coughs> we didn't get them really going until no after, mid morning. Yeah, afternoon set up, and they did all right for the three hours they fished in the house. Here's a question for you, Marshall. Still considering a shallow, deep, shallow house day like we discussed at the St. Paul show when we come up. How has that bite been? Um, hey, Bruce. So it's a little hit and miss. Uh, we'll talk about it when you get here. If I think it's going to work, we'll just do it. Um, we still have a couple set shallow. Um, it had been really good. It's kind of, I don't know if it's because of the weather and the cold that's been here right now. I think it should last a little longer. Um, so I don't think it's done yet. I think it's just been a little bit of a weather thing, but that's something we can figure out when you come, Bruce. What's the, what's the biggest fish you've seen this week? Well, Joe, you're on the ice. The biggest one I've seen is 19 and a half or just shy of 19 and a half. Okay. I've heard a couple others that were slot fish, but I'm not sure on the size. Okay. Any, uh, any, uh, multi-species coming in at all or? We've done a couple pike and a couple uh, perch. I think we've done a we couple pouch. We got a big sturgeon on Saturday. Yeah, one like of, yeah somebody caught I a big sturgeon. I'll Get send these. you some pics, Cody. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, near where I was fishing on Friday? or? Uh, no, right out on the lake. Really? Yeah. And it was, God, what was it? It was over 50. It was a big I, yeah, one. I would say it was over 50. It was, and they were probably 24 feet of water somewhere in there. Wow. Oh. What do you know? What, what they were using for uh, tackle? They, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not sure. I didn't ask. But they were. They're pretty stoked about it because they actually they landed it. I think they said what it take over an hour to get it in. Yeah. Huh. That's got to be. Uh, that's got to be a bite. Hey, do you notice uh, when things like that happen? Do you notice does the fishing slow in that house for a little while? Does, it, does all that ruckus and obviously chase everything kind of away? Have you ever seen it draw stuff to to it? No, I'd say it chases stuff away. You got something like that thrashing around there for an hour and a half. Yeah. It's yeah. A lot of, that's a lot of commotion. It, it, it chases it away. Uh, ice anchors are a must for side by sides to winch against if you get stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Tilu 1333 says going to be up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Pumped. Been there every year for 15 years. Cool. It's all good, my side. Um, oh, I was going to ask you something. Uh, what was I going to ask you? Shoot, I should probably write stuff down because uh, I'm waiting at, at going through the chat, and then I was going to ask you, and I forgot. But um, did you find any crappies this week? I caught one yesterday. I was fishing in an area where I kind of. 
I knew there was crappies in the area. I was hoping on catching some, but it started out really weird. Um, <clears throat> could not get fish to bite with a spoon. Switched to a Berkeley um, War Pig Junior and had a 14 inch wall. I just absolutely smashed it, had it so far down into his throat that I almost had to cut his head off to get the lure back. And then it switched from like super finicky again. And I had to use, and of course I'm fishing Canada, so I can't use bait. So I'm using a crappie magnet. I caught, I caught like five walleyes, a nice perch. Uh, the perch took me like 20 minutes to catch them just up and down, up and down, up and down. And then uh, at towards the end of the day, caught one crappie. And then all of a sudden I, I suspect they were crappies, but I had fish on the screen for 20 minutes after dark. And it was just, all of a sudden they'd appear up and race up to it and then they'd stop, you know, how crappies are, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, couldn't get them to, couldn't get them to cooperate. But I was really surprised for, you know, kind of the weather switch that they were actually were, were uh, biting and actually caught some fish for once. Um, question for you, is a gaff harmful on Northern Pike? Yes. Because you put it down the hole, you don't exactly know where you're pulling on it. My personal opinion. Yep. I, I think I think a gap is harmful on any fish. Right. I'd I'd say it'd be circumstantial, maybe. Just to just depends on the circumstances of how it's used, where it's used, um size of the gaff, if you can, you know, but I, I would say it'd be pretty easy to to harm the fish with it. Um, I said his question is the quality of rod is important in ice fishing as it is in open water fishing. I'd say absolutely. Yeah. I think we had this conversation last week. Um, I tend to probably fish with a higher quality rod in the summer than I do winter, but I still fish with, I mean, I'm, I, 13 St. Croix um, Iron Range rods. That's what I'm using in the wintertime. So, I mean, it's pretty good quality equipment in the wintertime, too. You know, Pfluger. We've always go back to Pfluger. Cody loves it. I do, too. Yep. I would agree. I uh, might be trying a new brand of reel, though, this Did week. Did you do it? I think I think I might. I've, I've talked to a lot of people. Um, I guess I'll just say it, uh, but the company Piscafun is contacting me and wants to wants me to do some review or to try out some of their stuff and they want to sponsor the channel and, and uh, it costs money to go around and fish places. So, but before I, we, and I asked you too, um, before I kind of was leaning towards doing it, I, I asked a lot of guides. I asked a lot of people. What do you I think? I haven't personally heard anything bad about them. I do have a friend, um, <clears throat> oh, an acquaintance, that was sponsored by them at one point in time and I never got to use one. Um, but I'm pretty sure you're going to figure it out how I can use one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should but, be able to. Uh, I would, yeah, I'd know. I would love to use one. To try it out. Joe, have you, uh, have you heard much about them? Uh, I have several friends that own them and they seem to love them. They've all tried to talk me into getting them and I can't get away from my flugers. What uh, what are what are you using, Joel, when you're going fishing? What's what's your setup look like? Uh, open water, I run strictly Saint Croix. Ice season, I run a little bit of Saint Croix and two brother rods. Those two, two brother rods are pretty nice rods. Okay. <laughs> what are you using for reels? Uh, Fluger all year. Okay. Presidents. Uh, Presidents XTs. Just the you know from the bottom of the line on the pre uh, Flugers to the top of the line. Okay. Uh, Fish Tits is heading up the first, giving a shout out to my man, Stu Pedasso, for setting it up. Are you familiar with Stu? I'm nope. not sure if I know that. <laughs> All right. Matt's in the house. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> would you guys consider Minnesota accents a fake Canadian accent or vice versa? A. <laughs> I don't think you'll hear much for A on, on here, but uh, that's from a New Brunswick guy right there. I've so. been uh, 
I've been asked if I've been from Canada many times, but I, yeah, we're half a mile away. That's what I tell them. Yeah, I mean, just as well could be Canada. I know, I know, Canada wants to take back part of Lake of the Woods, but I hope that never happens. Um, we've all heard that story before. Mm-hmm. But how far? Uh, <clears throat> how often are you moving your houses right now? We're on the move. We're fe- we're fishing fresh houses uh, about every third day, and that's normally what we do. Um, so we move them fast. We're pretty aggressive about how we do it. If we're not on fish, we're moving fish houses. And I, <laughs> the guys get pissed off at me once in a while. Joe hasn't been here long enough to figure that out. But when I when we ain't catching fish and I say move houses, and they're looking at me funny sometimes, but we haven't even fished that house. I'm like, well, if the two on the other side haven't caught fish, we ain't going to try the one in the middle of it. So we're going to move them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just how we do it. Mm-hmm. Usually... So usually you'll you'll what if what if a house is doing well you're not going to move it if it's doing well are you? No, um, generally, the, a general rule of thumb is three days and gone. First day okay, second day okay, third day e, eh, fourth day gone. That's kind of my general rule of thumb. Okay. You know, you just the it's the whole fresh ice thing is the best way to do it. Right clean ice what uh when you're talking about clean ice what's the water clarity looking like this year good we were very very concerned about it in the beginning with the wind we've had had when it froze but it's good yeah i think it looks i'd call it very good actually I said, ask, what's a good budget ice rod? I know this is a very broad question. I'm going to be fishing a tidal river that's salt water and fresh water, fishing for eel, perch, and smelt. So my personal opinion, and we'll ask for Joe's after I'm done, but see, my personal opinion on a good budget ice rod, and I might have expensive taste, I'm going to spend around, rod and reel, I'm going to spend around 100 to 125 bucks on a rod and a reel. By the time you put it together, um, I know you can do it cheaper than that. With that being said, you can take a mediocre rod <laughs> and reel combo that costs you 50 bucks, and you can put good braid on it. And good braid will make a cheaper rod or you know, mediocre rod, a better rod for sure. And I know there's a lot of people that agree with me. Joel, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think St. Croix is a good budget rod for ice fishing. You know, they're pretty reasonable. You can get them under a hundred bucks. I think they're great. I think the more important thing is having a good reel with a good drag system. I think that's probably the most important part right there. And then a good quality line, rather it's braid or floral or whatever you're choosing to use. Have you uh, have you tried any of that uh, any of those uh, Saint Croix Mojo ice rods at all, Joe? Uh, I have four of them. Okay, and I I love them. They're great. They're great. They thirty two inch or? Uh, I, I think I have a twenty eight, and the others are thirty two. What uh, what kind of length of rod are you? Do you kind of recommend or do you like? I like that thirty two inch. That's kind of, you know, now if I'm hole hopping, I like a little bit shorter rod, just uh, especially if it's windy out, you know, you keep that short rod and you keep that tip down by the hole. Um, But otherwise, I like that, if I'm in a house, I like that 32 inch. Okay. I kind of, I was, I was with you there for a long time. That 32 was a a sweet, just the perfect length. And now I bought some tuned up custom rods and it went to 36 and 38. Ooh, I gotta say, I really like it. What kind of just, action do you run? Uh, I got the oh, what did I have? I have the, well, I have the bull whip for panfish, and then the power precision. So that's a medium with a with a fast tip. Okay. So, really like it so far. Um, I just, I don't know. It's light. You know, not that it's gonna be heavy, but it's just, it just feels like it's really um just leveled i mean when you when you set when you set on a fish 
it just feels really good. I mean, it feels really good catching a fish all the time, but I mean, this that hook set feels really, really good. So, uh, let's see here. Mark Trimble likes an ugly stick, twenty-eight inch for a good budget rod. Ugly stick is good stuff. Ugly stick. Yep, you can drive over them pretty much. Do anything you you want to do. Uh, Fonz eighty four says typically when is the best fishing during ice season on Lake of the Woods? Early, mid, or late? Jimmy answered this question last week. Any day they bite, <laughs> but if I had to take a, <laughs> if I had to make up my mind, I'd be here right now, or I'd be here a little later. You know, you get. Mid January, before mid January, and after mid February, you know, you kind of get that mid January to mid February, a little bit of lull, but seems like we still always find some fish, you know. My opinion. See, I like early, um, before January first, and then late, you know, uh, late February, and. Uh, the wrapping up of the season in March, I think, is, in my opinion, the best time. It's definitely, it's definitely, it was really nice prior to getting this dumping of snow to move around and, and drill a hole, you know, in eight inches of ice or six inches of ice. And I mean, it's just so much more convenient to be moving around and stuff, you know, now, like I went up there, you know, I was up this past weekend and I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to, you know, drill some holes and camp out, you know, uh -huh. snow halfway up to your knees and yeah, and all that, you know, it just kind of, kind of changes a little bit, but I don't know if we get those warm ups, you know, like in January and stuff, when if it gets 20 degrees and there's no wind, it, it I don't know. I kind of like, you know, whole hop. And then if the, you know, fish are cooperating and stuff, it's, it's not so bad, but I think snow depth has a lot to do with it. Drifts, stuff like that. But temps drop down here. All the way to 22 degrees. All my holes were iced up. Yeah, this is a friend of mine that uh, above or below zero. Above, he's in uh, North Carolina, duck hunting right now. And uh, he sent me a picture this morning, complaining about a skim of ice. And I said, uh -huh. uh, "It's minus seven here right now, so I don't think you want to be complaining." <laughs> yeah, don't, don't talk to us about that, right? <clears throat> uh, what kind of price ranges are on those Piscifun reels? So what I've seen so far is the Carbon X really looks like the one that I kind of want to go with. And they look like they're about 80 bucks. Um, some of the bigger YouTubers are some of the bigger YouTubers. I think Tom Boley uses them. And uh, I just have I've been going to try one, but I, I've i been using Fluger for so long. You know, if you don't have issues with something, why change? You know, it ain't broke, um, don't fix it. Right. But if I can get a bunch of reels for free and, uh, you know, can't really turn that down, I'll give them a good Review. test and see what we happens. We were talking about reviewing some plows and stuff too the other day in the shop. Right. Right. Um, you know, just because you guys, specifically, you guys are, you know, pretty tough on equipment because plowing we roads are. and all that stuff we is, is uh, definitely hard on equipment. Mm -hmm. Which 2B rod do you like jigging? Well, I have the 32 medium action with, I think it's a fast tip, and I really like that one. It's nice and sensitive, and it's got that great backbone, and it can handle some big fish. Are you uh, are you more of a uh, aggressive jigger, Joe, or are you kind of like – let the fish tell you what they want, obviously, but in your experience, because it, it can really vary day to day on what it fish. Can. Want. I really tried to read my electronics and see what those, you know, try to react to what those fish want. You know, sometimes they want it real slow. Sometimes they want you to be aggressive. So I, I, I lean more towards the finesse side, I guess, you know, so a little bit slower, a little bit smaller presentation. Um, and it seems to work more times than not. Do you, do you ever use plastics uh, for walleyes? I do. In the winter? Winter and summer both. What, I'm, what you... I'm not a big fan of live bait. Okay. So educate us a little bit on plastics for walleyes in the winter. That's that's something I'm all ears for. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's just it's just like the it's just like the summertime. Um, 
you know, but I go, I go a little bit smaller, you know, you can use, so I'll use like a eighth ounce jig head and then I'll put on a, you know, rather it's like a small jerk bait or a small little paddle tail or something like that. I have a buddy that makes up a bunch of plastics that are all protein infused. So they're all infused with like animal shiner or wax worm or, um, night crawler and a bunch of different kinds. And that's kind of what I go with. I, I'm kind of loyal to his product because it works really well. And more times than not, it's catching more fish than that live bait is. And I, you know, but I think to use plastics, you have to have that confidence along with any other bait that you're using, rather it's a buckshot or a slender spoon or a leech flutter spoon or whatever you might be using. If you're not confident in that bait, I just don't think you're going to do as well as you would with something that you're confident in. What, uh, what colors you like? <clears throat> Uh, well, you know, when it comes to the jigs, it's, it, I find myself pink, red, chartreuse are kind of my favorite colors. And then when it gets into plastics, I kind of like that pearl white chartreuse and then, you know, like the shad color, that black and silver or something like that. Um, for the winter time now, open water, it kind of changes a little bit. I kind of go to that shad color and then I kind of, um, I do a lot of smallmouth fishing, so I really get into that try to match the crayfish color. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of my big things because both walleyes and smallmouth love crayfish. So, <laughs> so when we're talking, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're talking plastics in the winter and you're talking about paddle tails, how big, how big, like a two, two, three like inch, a, like a two inch, you know, something you, you know, usually crappie fishing, you'll use like an inch and a half or something like that. So maybe that next size up around that two, two and a half inch range two and a quarter, somewhere in there. Um, and then I try to use a jig head that where I can kind of make it a vertical presentation um, versus the horizontal, you know, and then and just kind of work it the same way you would jig in the summertime with it. Okay, so are you, are you pounding bottom a little bit or what are you? I, I do, but there again, I re kind of react to what the fish are wanting, you know, if, if I'm pounding the bottom and they're, it's kind of spooking them off, then I just kind of, just float it up in the air. It might just be one of those things where you're just barely moving it, you know, just, just enough to make that bait just kind of float. So if you're, if you're out, you've drilled a couple holes, got your electronics down, you're not marking any fish. Will you pound bottom a little bit to uh, pop the silt up a little bit? Does that absolutely you? make it look like they're feeding and try to bring some fish in? Right. Okay. Um, have you ever fished um, with bigger plastics? Four or five inch plastics in the in the winter. <laughs> uh, I can't say that I have. I've often pondered on that. Um, you know, big bait, big fish. You know, I wonder. <laughs> I'll do that know, a little more in the summertime. I, right? I'm, I'm not. I'm not big into the big bait. I, I run a lot of small baits all year long. I just. I don't know. You know, summertime. I'm throwing. I'm throwing those four inch stick baits or four inch paddle tails and that's about as big as i get and then in the winter time i'm about half that for everything now crappies on the other hand i i do like a big bait for crappie fishing so i use bigger baits for crappies too for sure yep i'm, I'm a sucker for those big bucket mouth crappies did you guys see the new baits blackwater customs released to know today i have not heard of them before. no i haven't heard from jamie today and i have to give him some grief because usually he shows it to me before he releases it that's, is that the guy that you were, we were talking about last week? That's yes. Okay. Okay. They're good. They're good baits. So you got to get me in touch with him. I got to try some. I out. will. I'll get. I'll get you some. He'll get us some. Um. Why has the bite been so tough when they're gonna turn? When are they gonna turn on? Consistent weather. Yeah. yeah. We've talked yeah. about this every week. Yeah. You want three days of consistent. You know. And we don't, you know, it's tough to come by sometimes. Yeah, we're going to, I was looking at the weather for next week, and it's just colder than. That's not cold. a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. No, no. But it uh, where I was going with that is, and then, like, the next week, it looks like it's going to be 30 degrees again. That's the thing. When you get this great big roller coaster ride, that's yep. what you don't want. If we're going to be cold, let's just be cold. 
Yep. You know, if we're gonna be mild, then let's just be mild. Yep. It'd be it would be no, it wouldn't bother me if we have this cold stretch for this all this week, you know, twenty below and stuff. And then if it would be fifteen to twenty degrees during the daytime and like five above at night to zero to maybe five below, wouldn't that be nice? I'll take I'll take about zero for the highs and the lows can be what they want to be for a while. Yeah, it just uh we need to make some lights, Cody. It gets rough on a snowmobile. Yeah, we can talk about your above zero temperatures and you know March. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was right. gonna say right. after Valentine's Day. So after mid February, <laughs> we can talk about your warmer temps and tell them let's yep. let's just stick with below zero. Yep. Um when we, when you what? gotta put the second extension on, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, well, then we can talk about some warm weather. <laughs> I got a dog that's being uh, a little bad here. Give me one second. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Uh, oddball handle designs. Yeah, not good. You've, you've dealt with that, brother. It's an inside joke. I can't remember. Mikey, what's the name of them? Because they are they're not good. Uh, I wouldn't recommend him at all, but I, the name is blanking me right now. He'll tell you. Different handle designs, huh? Um, says that's weird stuff. All that ice and no sweet tea. Yeah, you won't find you won't find much of that around here. Um. <coughs> Just ordered another Carbon X version 2 this time in a 2000 series. It was a $63 lightning sale. I think, Dave, I think you've commented on the uh, poll I did, but you uh, you spoke pretty highly of the, the Carbon X, the Piscifun, So I'm going to have to try them. I have never fished with one. Yeah, I haven't either. But I'll, I'll uh, if I can get some, um, and here we go. Do some reviews. Make it down to 32 this weekend in Orlando. Wow, Shiner guy. Uh, would people judge me if I brought a full-length open water rod ice fishing? I've seen people do it. Oh, yeah, so have I. I've seen people do it. We don't judge, we embrace. Living man, live in man, what's up? Uh, guys just chatting back and forth. Um, it's below freezing in the south. Florida's going to have iguanas falling out of the trees. Mullets are back in style. <laughs> it's going to end. I hope they are. I hope iguanas aren't falling out of the trees in April when I'm down there because I love Punta Gorda in April, and I hope the iguanas aren't falling out of the trees. <laughs> uh, who's your buddy that makes plastics? That what did you say was Blackwater Customs? Does he have a website or anything? Blackwater or Customs. I'll get the website from you. I don't have my phone. But it's out in the office. Um, I'll get the website, Cody. We'll get it. Um, we'll get it posted. Jamie's a good guy. Maybe yeah. we can get Jamie to sit in on our next one. He's a really good guy. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if he can do that. That'd be great. He runs his ice houses right right along with me. Um, I'll talk to him. He's a good guy. I bet he'd sit in with us if guys want him to. It's going to be a rough week for iguanas. <laughs> like the live chat, learn lots. A Lake Road Lodge banner as backdrop, Marshall, would be cool. Yeah, right up there on your, uh, on your wall there. We can see if we can do that. You have to work on that. Uh, how do you guys set up your rattle reels? How long of a leader? What pound test? And what size hook? So if I, if I run a rattle reel, which I don't do much of, I will run, um, actually, I run vinyl tip-up line for the most part. And then I'll run about 20 feet of, like, 8-pound mono on the end of that, you know, is what I personally do. What do you do? Uh, I like the fly line. I go with about a 25-pound test fly line, and then I do about a same thing, about a 20-foot leader, but I use fluorocarbon. Okay. I like the vinyl line because it doesn't seem like when your feet are all tangled up in it when you're ripping it up. It, uh, to me, personally, it seems to go back down the hole nicer. See, now uh, I, why I like that fly line is because you can get it in so many different colors. So yeah. when, when you got six rattle reels down, you can have six colors. And it's the same thing. I don't knot up. You can grab all six colors and tangle them all up and just grab the end of each line and 
away you go right back down the hole and yeah. you're not fighting with it at two o'clock in the morning cutting line and retying on so when the burbot makes a victory lap yeah <laughs> yeah do you uh on your ice fishing uh uh rods joe do you uh are you using leaders or do you like tie a floral leader on yours or nope I, i'm one of, i'm a weird guy i run floral on everything you do okay all, all full spool okay winter yeah. and summer what's that winter and summer yep both winter and summer i'm i the only thing i run braid on is uh my pike rods and my heavy vegetation bass rods everything else is floral okay what what kind what kind of floral do you use uh, I like my, I like this, um, give me a second here, uh, drawn a blank. Uh, God, it's been a long week. Yeah. <laughs> um, give me a minute here. Um, Joe finally gets a day Jesus. off tomorrow. Why am I drawing a blank? I like P-Line on mine that, uh, I use a, I usually tie a, a leader though. A floral leader to braid. Yeah, I guess I'm just drawing a blank. I can't think what it's called at the moment. I'll have to get back to you when I when I remember. So you, uh, Joe, for just some of the uh, people that may have just been coming in, you do some guiding in the summer too, right? Correct. How can someone get a hold of you if they want to? Uh, well, I got an email. You could uh, email me or check me out on Facebook at Keeper's Guide Service. Okay. I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that po spell that for me. <laughs> K E E R. Oh, hold on now. Sorry. K E E P E R S Guide Service. Okay, so keepers. Okay, so it yeah, is just like keeping it. some fish. Okay. What are you what are you targeting in the summer? Walleyes and uh, I do everything except for muskies. So okay. uh it's most I would say it's probably ninety percent. Walleyes and the other ten percent is probably smallmouth. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Uh, number one bait is confidence. Catches more fish than anything. Correct. Yep. And I think you know just this just over this weekend, I I bought some new baits. Um, you, have you heard of the Northland uh, minnowhead? Uh, it it. Uh, goes onto a treble hook like if you want to put it on a spoon or a jig and wrap or whatever it slides down over the over the uh, treble so you don't lose it it actually worked i caught some fish on it so that's just like deer hunting when you got 10 rifles in the closet yeah. and you got one you're confident with which one are you grabbing yep the one, grabbing you're the one you like one you're yep. confident with fly line to an eight point eight eight pound eight inch six pound floral leader Mad Duck Ice Rods. I've not heard of them either. I knew I seen a couple guys last year that had those and seemed to really like them. They were really talking them up. Do not like the handles. Is that one that has a weird handle? It has the weird goofy handles. I'm not impressed with them. My personal opinion with them. Um, held them. The handles are just I don't know. They they fit good in your hand until the fish bites and sets your hook, and to me they fall out of your hand when you're setting the hook. So I, I, my personal opinion is no. Okay. I've never, no experience with them. Uh, Pisca funds are not in big box stores. It's directly from the uh, company. Full length rod ice fishing. Just don't. <laughs> I may try it this winter though. You know what? I, I just may try it. We'll make a video. Uh, we'll go lake trout right? fishing, then you're going to want to pull anchor out. Uh, four foot six inch rod for fishing little creeks here in Pennsylvania for brookies. Why not use them for ice fishing? Yeah, I mean, that's only a 54 inch. That'd be a lake trout rod. Well, Bill, one of the biggest things is generally when we're fishing in shelters, 4.6, it's half the length of the shelter right there right joe yeah you know so that's why we're fishing i mean everybody's see i fish short you like your 32s me my perfect ice rods a 28 because i like to be right there on top of my hole 
my personal opinion. And I generally fish a little heavier than normal people. So if you're going to go a little longer rod, you're probably going to fish a little lighter, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely a light tackle, light line, light rod. Do you do, you do any lake trout fishing, Joe? Uh, I I used to go to Michigan all the time and do it, but I haven't done it in years. I do a lot of trout fishing, but not lake trout. Okay. Is there is there a lot of trout streams in central Minnesota or? Not really. It's mostly, you know, stock trout lakes around the Brainerd area that I fish. And, and they're a hoot. I mean, you can go and catch 100 trout. I mean, granted, they're all 14 to 16 inches, you know, and you catch that occasional 19 incher. But when you're catching it, I use an ultralight when I'm doing it, you know, a little seven foot ultralight with four pound test. And man, that's a blast. Okay. Uh, Fletch is at work, my side. Uh, Carter says, are you still thinking next week for half tons? Uh, we talked about this a little bit, but, uh, after Christmas is what you're kind of looking at. I'm thinking so Carter. Um, yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be after Christmas. What's the best bite time for walleyes? Well, walleyes, normal thinking to everybody thinks they're a morning and evening thing, but Lake of the Woods is a little different. Um, We've talked about this before, you know, my dad always called it a union lake, nine to five, or whatever, eight, eight to five. Um, you can, you generally get them throughout the day here. You're going to get your lull time at some point in the day. You're going to have your two, three hour lull, but it ain't necessarily always in the middle of the day either. No. And I, uh, honestly, the last couple of years, I have noticed and I have been catching fish after dark for a yep. while. Yep. I don't ever really remember that, you know, but. Did you ever try that hard? Uh, yeah, I did. When I was a little bit younger, I did uh, I did things the hard way. I would uh, sleep in a portable, no problem, fish all night. Just I've had it. many, many nights when I was younger where – you leave that one rod down in the middle of the night and all of a sudden rattle, rattle, rattle. Oh, there's a 17 inch wall. And I always leave only one rattle. My thing was leave one rattle reel down in the middle of the night. Cause if you leave three down, you get a burbot, it takes a victory lap. You got a mess, you know, but I've had a lot of nights where I catch three good walleyes throughout mm -hmm. the night, you know, Mm -hmm. And then I've had a lot of nights where I wake up and there's no minnow on there, so I didn't hear it either, you know? Right. Um, they're there, and it happens. So living, living, living MN Outdoors in with the Super Chat, appreciate that. All the, all the If you do feel like donating to the channel, all that money will go back to the channel. Uh, something to do with fishing. Uh, appreciate it, Daniel. Uh, I got to fish with Fletcher when he was up there, too. Uh, went to Long Point this last Saturday. Was slow in our spot, but west side of the road, I guess, was hot. Still waiting on Dales, but hoping to go to Morris again soon. Was a fun bite. Um, I tried a light mono leader on my rattle reel once. Set the hook on a tank walleye, and the line just snapped like a twig. I use heavy braid, and I'll laugh out loud. <clears throat> I hate mono. I will not use mono on any any ever. I hate mono. I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I hate mono. I hate it. I'm right there with you, Cody. I'm not a fan of mono. I I will not use it. Uh, live in Western Minnesota, coming up for the first time in two weeks. What's your favorite lure to use for big walleyes? I like my personal opinion. You take a glow red Northland buckshot. I'll fish with it any day if you got to give me one. Color? Glow red. Glow red. Okay. Joe? I would agree, except for I'd have to go with glow pink. Okay. Tipped or not tipped? Pink. Tipped or no tip? Well, you know, I like to use a minnow head. Or otherwise, uh, my I like to use billy rub. I don't know if you've heard of that. I have, and I, I've been going to buy some. And you I got to go get some. Like it? Good you stuff? Have to go get some. Okay. It'll change your life. You just... Uh, 100%. You just kind of rubbing it on the. Yep. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a Vaseline based product. So it's not like a lot of those other fish scents out there where you got to constantly put it on. You put a little bit on and it lasts a very long time. Um, perfect example the spring up on the Rainy River, 
we were sturgeon fishing and we ran all the night crawlers and I started using my beat up plastics that we had from walleye fishing. And I was just hooking them on my circle hook and we were catching sturgeon with just chunks of plastic. And he makes like yeah. many different flavors. Yeah. He's, lots of different flavors. You can get pretty much any color you want. Um, you know, I mean, from freshwater shrimp to shiner, I think he's going to do some spot tail this, Prada, this spring, cr yeah. crayfish, waxworm, night crawler, garlic. I mean, you name it. What what flavor would you recommend? Uh, up here, I would have to go with the shiner. Okay. Mark Jane with the super chat. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas to Merry you. Merry Christmas, too, Mark. Thank you very much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, chartreuse and pink were hot in Long Point, but a gold white with a green glow. Uh, you know, honestly, for me, I really haven't had a whole lot of luck. I've said this every week too with with chartreuse on Lake of the Woods. White and gold, white, gold, orange, and red would be my go tos. But lake trout, chartreuse for sure. But other than that, There's if I had one one color, it'd be white. There's a few white. places on this lake that I love white. There, I, and I don't know. To me, if you get up on the rocks, I like white. Um, otherwise, honestly, ninety percent of the time, if I'm in my boat and there's six people fishing, three of them are fishing with something gold and orange or golden chartreuse. Gold is the color of Lake of the Woods. So, anybody bother with tip ups in your neck of the woods, or just jigging? A lot of tip ups in this in, in late in the year um, for Northerns. Guys will do them, you know. Set one outside the house when they're fishing walleyes too. But you get into that March when the water starts to flow in a little bit, and you get a little oxygen in. The Northerns get active. There's a lot of tip up fishing going on. And it's a lot of fun. Do you do any tip-ups at all, Joe? Uh, I do. Um, I think tip-up fishing can be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, see that you flag get up and go chasing after it. I don't know. I've been doing it since I was a little kid, and I've always loved it. Have you ever uh, used tip-ups much for walleyes? Or? Uh, yes. So I, I lived in Wisconsin for like five, six years, and there was a lake out there. We wouldn't go out until like six o'clock at night in the winter time. That's all we'd run is tip ups and just shine them with our headlights on the truck and just sit in there and play cribbage or whatever and wait for them to go up. And it's fun. Walk, walk us through how you set up a tip up for walleye. So it's pretty much the same way as a rattle reel, except for I'll use, I'll use that uh, vinyl rattle reel line. And then same thing, I'll put on a nice leader and then I'll set my, you know, just I usually use, use a plain hook, red, pink, whatever color you want. And then the lightest split shot I can get to where my minnow don't swim up. Okay. So like a, probably an eighth ounce or something like that? or, or Yeah, or if, you're, if you're looking at a split shot, I think it's like a number five. Okay. Um, and then I put that about 18 inches above my hook so that minnow can kind of swim around a little bit but doesn't go too far up. So it's not that fish isn't chasing that minnow away. Yeah. I've always wanted to try tip ups for wallet. There's so many things that I wanted to try. I mean, it just, I get limited time, you know, especially got to go back to work starting tomorrow. But so my, my month is gone, but um, I, I'm going to try, I'd like to try tip ups for, uh, for walleyes get this. Cause I think you, I think a guy could catch some decent sized walleyes with them. I think. Or how, how high off the bottom are you hanging it? I do. So, it really depends on the lake. I'd say up here, you know, I'm a sucker for being high in the water column. The walleye's eyes are above their head. Beat up. You know, so if you're if you're hanging down on that bottom and that walleye swimming at two feet, he might not see or smell your bait, you know, or versus if you're three, four feet off bottom, that, that you know, that walleye's two feet off bottom, he's more than likely going to at least come and take a sniff. Yep, I think so too. I think so too. Uh, cheap rod and reel combos at any of the bait stores in a pinch in a pinch some are better than others in a pinch some are better than others i have i don't know i probably have more expensive tastes so i'm not a real good judge of what to tell you about 
cheap rods and reels. I used to be, um, you know, growing up, I mean, you know, didn't have a steady job and everything. And, you know, I'd get whatever, you know, the HT stuff. I mean, and it worked, you know, it probably didn't, uh, you know, I I probably caught more fish back then, probably because I was a little more diehard and was out 22 hours of of a 24 hour day. But, you know. Uh, it all depends on where you go, though. Seems the more east you go, the better gold, white with green glow works better. The more west, your chartreuse and pink colors are better. You know, and every, everybody has a different experience. Everybody has a different opinion, you know. And, and some, you know, like I could probably fish with a lure and not catch fish with it. And it'd be something that Marshall would like. And he'd go out and catch fish with it, you know, vice versa. I think, and that's where the confidence. confidence. Yep. That's where the confidence thing comes in, I think. Uh, Patience. I'm running a sleeper from Lake Road at Roger Fuller. Um, walleye fishing not so good in Pennsylvania. What's the best? What is the best place to do a trip to the Midwest? Lake of the Woods. I would agree. I would agree. Joe. Yeah, I'd have to go with Lake of the Woods. It's the best place for numbers for sure. Um, John Chapman says, hey, Joe, has Lake of the Woods cleared up enough to use an underwater camera? Maybe if you want to look right at the camera. No. But no, I, I, you know, I'd say the water clarity, I mean, it's cleared up over the years, I think, from remembering as a kid to now. You know, I remember as a kid, you couldn't see past the bottom of the ice and now I think you can see a good couple feet. Yep. But. So I think I've used an underwater camera on Lake of the Woods up north. Um, you can you can see a little bit. It just you Sorry, know you can but... right next to your bait. You know. So maybe. you've used one. You've used one up here. Have you ever noticed that? Do you think that camera scares a fish a little? Yes. I, I, I think it does. Walleyes definitely. I think I think an underwater my personal opinion is that camera and for what reason you can call it infrared or whatever, I think it scares the fish. I agree. I I really do think the camera does. But I think electronics do too when you're fishing in shallow water, that that ping of your yeah. transducer and when you're in real shallow, I've noticed where those those fish get real finicky. Because they can hear that, and mm-hmm. I've noticed the difference. You turn your electronics off, and you start catching fish. Hmm. Never, never tried that. I've noticed. It. I, I, I don't know if I notice it as much with the, you know, like the flashers, but with the camera, I, I really. I, yeah, especially on the walleye side, you know, now like sunfish or perch, they kind of seem interested in the camera for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the walleye's not so much. And then on the ping of the sonar from your transducer on your Vexlar that I notice it more so on those finicky crappies. Um, you know, I'm a crappie guy. I've always been a crappie guy. And I think I've pretty much dialed those in just about anywhere. And I, I when they're real finicky like that in that shallow water, once you know you're on them, you turn those electronics off, fish that water column that they're in, and it seems like you'll put a lot more fish on the ice. No kidding, huh? Yep. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Amanda, all the way, uh, saying hello all the way from Australia. Appreciate it. Uh, good to have you in here. Uh, get some of what what I said. I don't know the exact name of hooks I have, but get the basic white gold with green glow and some pink and chartreuse ones. I don't use the daredevil style ones. So must not be talking spoons. Um, J&J, what's going on? Live, uh, I got a promo code for me. Well, what's, what's it for? Um Daniel. Put that baby in the in the chat, uh, Daniel, and let us know what it's for. <clears throat> we run tip ups for walleyes for sure, Dave says. <clears throat> Laugh out loud, Joe. That's the way I've been doing it for years. Neg- Nagani, Michigan, not so far from Wisconsin. I've been tip up fishing since we've got ice. I hope I said that right. Nagani. <clears throat> uh, tip up for walleyes during early ice on red fishing does great. Yeah, you know, I, never, I didn't really think about that, but that would be a good thing too. Um, 
the, the next common here is another fish that we haven't really talked about a lot. Have you seen any burbots this year? Yeah, a few. Yeah, a handful. How, how often? I think we'll start seeing them more now that we're getting a little deeper. It seems like as soon as you get in that 28 to 30 foot range, a lot more start to show up. She hasn't cleaned a few. Yeah, I, 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 five or six, I think we've cleaned. You know, and then late in the season, it seems like now you got to go back shallow for them as they're getting ready to go into spawn, right? They spawn in like March or something. Okay. <clears throat> um, do you have any good recipes for them? You know what? Honestly, Cody, everybody says boil them in 7 up, boil them in Sprite. To be really honest with you, I clean them up, bread them like I bread my walleyes, and they're good. Do you, do you notice a difference in them in taste versus uh, other fish? Or? Maybe a little bit, but I think they taste just fine, breaded, cook them the same way. <clears throat> well, that's a video idea, how to clean a bourbon. We can do that. Did you do the did you do the northern video? I didn't see it. Next Sunday. Backstrap them like a deer. If anybody knows how to backstrap a deer, that's how you clean a bourbon. Yeah, they're actually pretty easy to that's, clean. That's how you do it. Miss Becca, hello. Uh bourbon on Wednesday. Sunday. And Mark J. Larson says, Marshall. I really yeah. like your Stormy Cromer. I got lots of them. <laughs> Joe, what do you think of the Stormy Cromer? I think they're, I it. think I think they're great, except for I think it needs to say Lake Road Lodge on it. Yeah, I would agree. I if would it, agree. If it said Lake Road Lodge on it, I'd probably be tempted to get one. Uh, does anyone know? Anyone here know why at night? Last weekend, crappie fishing, only in the evening, there's a lot of interference that appeared coming off the bottom and during the day in the same area. Are you using live scope or are you using regular flashers? Because live scopes, you're going to get more interference at night, Rachel. Yeah, well, you get a lot of your bugs that start moving. There's yep. zooplankton and things like that, your blood worms. All that stuff seems to move more in the evening time. The stuff's coming out of the mud or it's dropping back down off the ice and floating back down to the bottom as that pressure's changing through the night with the moon phase and whatnot. Daniel, if you have a promo code for Billy Rub, put it in the chat. Um, if anybody wants to buy some Billy Rub, make sure you... I forgot about that, that you've got a promo code for that. Yeah, put that in the chat, Daniel, if you don't mind. Um, always want to get up there and catch them. No one here likes them. Pretty cool. Eel pout burbot will bump your flasher transducer for some reason. I assume it's the pinging of it. I've had walleyes hit my transducer. I've had northerns hit it. I mean, you know. Just be sure when you notice a weird bite, you feel up your other lines if you have a friend with you before the tangle up. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a good question. Do you, for, <clears throat> do you prefer dead stick with a jig head, minnow, or regular hook minnow? Hook middle on the tail or under the dorsal? On a dead stick, I like that plain red hook with a split shot set about 12 inches above it with a rainbow or the biggest, fattest chub you can find in the bucket um, hooked towards the tail on a dead stick. My personal opinion. Well, now me, I'd, I'd go plain hook, um, hooked in the mouth. Or if they're real finicky, I like to side hook them. Then that minnow just swims in a circle. They can't swim away from the fish, so the fish doesn't have to chase it. Joe, do you, you ever use a drop shot in the wintertime? <laughs> I do. It's, it actually works pretty amazing. It, it does. It does. Yep. Yep. I, uh, I started using one last year when I can use live bait or, you know, dead bait, live bait. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I actually do like it. Can a guy fish... In less than 28 feet, absolutely. I don't. I think there's part of that question is missing, though. I think, can a guy catch fish in less than 28 feet? Absolutely, you can. All year long, I think. We haven't fished. Today is the first day we fished over 28 yeah. feet. Yeah. Roger says, bourbon isn't much different than a, cat, than a catfish in texture. It's more mushy. I don't know if I call it mushy. I don't mind it at all. 
There's still going to be Minneapolis Lakes for walleyes. Um, all right, so here, here comes the next debate. Of the major brands of electronics for flashers, what's your go-to, Joe? Uh, well, <laughs> I, 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 I was always a Vexilar guy. Um, I do run Garmin LiveScope. But this winter, I went to my, I took my Hummingbird off my boat, and I've been running my Hummingbird. And honestly, I think I like it more than my Vexlar. I did just something about being, you know, I can get that normal flasher like you have on your Vexlar, and then to have that graph there. Yep. Um, I noticed when I was on Red Lake early that I was seeing fish that I wasn't seeing on the Vexlar. So okay. I'd have to, out of the Vexlar and Garmin, I'd have to go with Garmin. Okay. Me, uh, between the two, if it's going to be a flasher, all I know is Vexlar, so that's what I'm going to fish with. You give me another choice, I'm going to say Garmin with a live scope. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get yelled with my friend when I see that. that. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Flashers, I've got both. I've got the Helix 7, and I've got a, I actually, I got a Markham, and I actually like the Markham, too. Oh, no, you can't believe you just said that. Oh yeah, I've 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 had that thing for years and years and years. I like it. I, I I would not I won't I won't quite say that I would rather not fish if I had a Vexlar, but I have never liked Vexlars. I just never have. But now when you're fishing with somebody else, don't you have a lot of problems with your Markham versus when somebody else has a Vexlar in the house? Um a little bit, but not real bad because there's so many. I have a five, uh, five I, I think it is, or whatever. Okay. So I've got a lot of different channels, but um, sometimes it seems like my hummingbird is actually worse than the Markham is for interference sometimes. Hmm. So, uh, and I don't know yet. I, I still would like to see the the Mega Live versus the Live Scope. I, I'd like to see it in real life and actually oh. try it. I seen the Mega Live last year, and I, I gotta say, I wasn't super impressed. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, th I I still think Garmin's got them blown way out of the water, and hearing all the issues they're having with it, I just I don't. Maybe when they work all their kinks out, I could see it, but I think they're so focused on the rumor of that 360 Live that I think they're kind of starting to put that Mega Live on the back burner. So if uh, if you had the opportunity to get that 360 live do you think that's going to be revolutionary would that be better than down uh, live scope or what do you think you know i i can't say i'd run out and buy one i mean you can take your live scope and put it in perspective mode and get 180 you know mm -hmm. um do you really need a c live 360 i don't know now live or now just 360 is a game changer when it comes to looking at structure right. i don't i don't know about live 360. okay but open water, I think, would be different, wouldn't it? Yeah, I could see maybe in open water, it could be a little more beneficial. You know, if you're fishing on a big structure, you know, a big reef or something, and those fish are swimming around and be able to see, okay, well, now they're behind me. And should I have to constantly mess with your pole? Right, right. Uh, Roger says, Jim, I, perf I personally prefer that 22 to 26 foot depth. 20 does good in the morning and afternoon, but it's a personal preference. Early ice, the more shallow you are, 20 foot, the better. Um, if you had one depth of water that you could fish and you had to fish it all the time, what would it be? 26 feet. Oh, well, for me, for me, I think I would have to be in, I think I'd have to go with 17. 22 would be my number. Just up north there, there's something about 22 feet. Just always... If I'm going to go north, I want to be under 20 all day long. Where you fish? I, my personal opinion. Can't share it yet. Okay. Electric or standard fillet knife? Or <laughs> That's where we disagree. <laughs> or skins it. I'll take a straight blade. Give me my leech lake knife any day, all day. As far as I'm concerned, it's the best knife made. Joel's going to disagree. You know, for years, that's all I used was the traditional knife. Now, last year, I started out with one when I did my first year up here guiding. And when you clean as many fish as we do, I just couldn't do it anymore. So I went out, I broke down and bought an electric. And let me tell you, the first half dozen fish or so I cleaned, I, 
I hacked them up. Something terrible. <laughs> but once I got the hang of it, now I, I don't know if I could go back to a standard night. I mean, I, I think they both have a time and a place, but, um, you know, now maybe doing a pike or something, I think the I'll standard take, knife I'll would take be a lot better. I'll take my standard knife. I run, I use Leech Lake knives, and they are, as far as I'm concerned, the best knife ever built. Um, as far as a standard knife goes, you spend a little money for them. Uh, you get them at Reed's, you get them at Shields. They are, they're amazing knives. What do they run? Huh? How much are they? Uh, they are, well, you know, I have bought one for a couple of years, Cody, but I think the last one I bought was like 110, 115 bucks. So I'm sure they're right there a little bit more. You pay for it, but it they're good. I mean, you know, when we're cleaning every week, you know, like on the charter boats, we're cleaning a few hundred fish a week and you're sharpening them once a month. You know, they're that good, you know, very huh. good. I'll have to look into those. I've got a... They're good. I can't think of the name of the knife I got now. Uh, it's and a higher-end knife. Huh? And, I did, and I did look at down at the show in St. Paul, um, and I've heard good reviews on them, but I haven't... I haven't... Want, I don't want to try one because I just, I'm happy with what I have, but I've heard good things about Cutco knives. Very, very good things, you know. Okay. Electric, standard, play knife, or skins it system. Skins it, as far as I'm concerned, is a joke. I don't know what your deal is, what your thoughts are, Joe. But I, I think uh, skins it would be a good boat anchor. Yep. You know, I, I, I don't. I just, to me, it's a gimmick. You can clean fish so fast any other normal way. I cannot think of the name of my knife. It's like a Swiss brand or something like that. Uh, Gustav? No, no. Um, oh, I can't think of it. If I think of it, I'll, I'll bring it up. But he's both electric and standard. Hummingbird, I agree. Garmin Striker 4 setup for ice fishing transducer. Have a Markham Showdown troller. Not much of a fan of that. Yeah, the, the showdown, that was kind of a not a not a great one, but um oh well, here's a good one. <coughs> What's your biggest walleye you've ever caught? My biggest walleye I have ever caught personally, and I know I've had probably bigger on, but the biggest I've ever boated is 30 and a half inches. Joe, he's smiling. Well, <laughs> well, everyone's gonna think it's a fish story, but I got a 33 and a quarter and a 32 are my two biggest. Wow. 33 and a quarter is from Red Wing, right off the boat landing. And my 32 was uh two years ago on the Mississippi around Aiken. Wow. 29 and a quarter is my biggest lake of the woods. Um it was near Bodette somewhere. It was on a charter. It doesn't really count though, because it was on a on a uh uh downrigger. <laughs> but uh so the Biggest jigging would be, I can't remember if it's 28 and three quarters or 29. Never been able to crack, uh, crack 30, though. How's the LifeScope rental going? Has it been available? Good. <coughs> We've, it's been rented. It's gotten good feedback. Yep. Mark J has a skins it, and he loves it. Four inch at reeds is fifty bucks. Five and a half inches, one hundred and ten bucks. Leech Lake knives. I'll have to look into those. Too. But I think I'm using like the seven inch um, Leech Lake knife. And the one thing that's nice about them Leech Lake knives, you order a different color handle. So if you got like us and the gut shack, John and I, you know, he's got this color handle. I got that color handle. Jimmy's got his color handle. Everybody goes and grabs their knife. Nobody screws knives up. I gotta try to figure out the uh but I'm pretty sure ours are seven and a halves. Try to figure out the name of the fillet knife I have. I think it starts with a V. Victorinox, that's what it is. I haven't heard of that one. They're supposed to be pretty good, but um Daniel filleted over a hundred fish this weekend with the original Rapala. I love them. Seven and a half. The original Rapala, they work. Seven and a half is ninety-five bucks. 
I don't lose any belly meat on panfish with skins it. Hmm. My idea was to bring a wheelhouse up, but I would like to stay in 22 to 28 feet. As for now, I'm walking out no sled or ATV, not looking to walk more than 300 yards. Military screwed up knees. Well, you'd, you'd be able to, unless you're talking about where you're at, but you can you can get out uh, yeah. up on Lake of the Woods. And I put you on your biggest walleye on Lake of the Woods, Mark J says. How big was that? Was that 26 or was it 29? I can't remember. Biggest for me is a 26 incher when I was 12 on a trip of sportsman, so 12 years ago. Hoping to break that this year. Still trying to get my friends to pitch in for a trip with Wes Harder to get on that. There's a lot of there's a lot of big walleye swimming around on that lake. That is for sure. I got a promo code for you for Billy Rub, Cody. Okay. Um go ahead. S M B F twenty-five. Okay. All right, so I'll put that in the chat. So if anybody's looking to buy Billy Rub, is that fifteen percent off or? Uh, I think it's twenty five, but I could be wrong. Okay, I'm writing that down. So if you guys want to buy some Billy Rub, <coughs> there is the promo code right there for Billy Rub. Um, what what scent? What scent is uh, the best? You said up up on Lake Woods. I'd go with Shiner. Okay. Emerald Shiner. Yeah, I've been going to buy some of that, and I just have not. That, is that a local company to Minnesota, too? Uh, yeah, he, he's he's uh, he's list, he, he lives in uh, Minnetonk, and he does it right out of his basement. Wow. Isn't he originally from Deeper Falls? Uh, I'm not sure where he originally from, but uh, he used to be a chef, and now this is what he does. It's all he does. Hmm. And he's... he's <laughs> He's got it down to a science. I'm sure he's making some money. Yeah, he actually just had it at the U of M. They did some studies with some fish with it. Huh. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what the turnout was on it, but he said it was a big difference. Is his name Billy by chance? His name is Bill. I <laughs> uh, got a 20, <coughs> 28 this year fishing our river, jigging a minnow. There's nothing like catching a big walleye, though, you know. On a jig and a minnow, especially. Yeah, because they yep. hammer it. I mean, big crappies are one thing, too. Well, I mean, anything big, but, you know, just... if they're, for As far as size of fish, what's your favorite big fish to catch, you guys? Anything big that bites my hook. You know, I have fun fishing every day when I fish. If it's a... It can be a big bourbon, a big northern, a big walleye. I mean... You go to Florida, anything that bites your hook, it's just whatever, a big perch. I agree to an extent, but I, I think for the – now, if you want to talk about the best fight for a big fish, in my opinion, it's probably a small mo. I was going to agree, yeah. agree with you there. 100%. You know, I, I don't think anything will give you a better fight than you a take, small mo. You take a 19-inch small mo, and you think you got something on the end of it right there. Yep. They're fun. I'll agree 100%. I mean, sturgeon fishing is really fun, but after about 45 minutes, it's like, all right, I'm, you know, like. Yeah, we need to get this done. Right. Yep. I don't consider a sturgeon a fighting fish. They just kind of do what they want. I, right. always, I always tell everyone it's a semi pulling a Volkswagen around. Yeah. Right. You know, it, that's, that's what it is. I don't care what kind of gear you got. If they want to do something, they just do it. Mm hmm. 26 inches. Okay. Bill Frazier. Yep. Do you know him personally, Daniel, or? I can't remember if you said you did or not. Billy Rub, outdoors again, bought it. I, I guess <coughs> I did not see it the last time I was in there. He's also at Log Cabin. Oh, he is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Just just the rub. No plastics. Okay. Is he making plastics, too? Oh, yeah. He is, yep. huh? Yeah, dog. You have to go on his website and check him out. Do you know him personally? or? Uh, yeah, I actually. So I have a very special color that's designed just for Mille Lacs Lake. Oh really? Yep. What what we, what's we that? Rocked it together in his in his basement, and it 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 matches those crayfish. If you put a crayfish next to this bait, you would wonder how he got that color. And the best part is he's colorblind. Huh? And he nailed it. I told huh. him what I wanted, and he started throwing some stuff together, and it came out perfect. Wow. And I'm the only one that has that color, and I love it. 
Oh, so it's not even released. It's just for you? No, nope, it's it's a custom color that I had made. Huh. And I had him do, I think he did about 15 pounds for me. So okay. I, got a lot, I got a lot of it. But, wow. I mean, he could, I'm sure if somebody wanted it and they seen the color, he'd do it up for them. Uh-huh. Uh, we have everything but musky here, so I've always wanted to catch one. Never have. Do you ever? How, how often do you run into muskies on the south end there? Not very often. Um, I probably count the muskies that I've boated on the south end of the lake in all the years I've been fishing here on less than one hand. But they're around. But um, you got to get into the angle. There's, they're up in the angle. If you want them on the Minnesota side, um, a lot of the muskie guys during COVID that were real used to going into Canada and fishing them, um, they all learned that there's a lot of muskies in Minnesota when they couldn't do Canada. And there mm-hmm. is a lot of muskies in the angle. Yep. The Minnesota yep. side, too. Yep. <clears throat> Team Johnson from Wisconsin, how's it going? Bunch of his crappie plastics. Get the small ones here on small rivers and creeks. They fight like a tank. Yes, they do. They do fight. Um, which I ordered Shiner Billy Rub. All right. What's the waterfall hunting like up there? Well, this year was amazing. I hadn't waterfall hunted for quite a few years, and I went this year with some friends, and it was good. It was a lot of fun. It was it was good over my way as well. How was it over in Malax? It was fantastic. It's the best I've seen probably in my entire life, honestly. I mean, there I don't think there was a, a type of duck I didn't shoot this year. And on that, any given day, I've seen two, three, four, five thousand birds. I mean, it was unbelievable. Yep, it was a good year this year. How many uh, how many birds do you think you shot this year? <laughs> I. I'd say a safe number would be 300. Nice. Much for geese? Shot a lot of geese and some big geese. Tell me, some of the geese we shot, I I think you could pass them off as turkeys. Any any specs? No. In my area, you rarely see them. At least I I rarely see them. Um, Same with snows. We don't see, we see very few snows in my area. Okay. Do you have do you have birds that winter there all year round? Uh, not you know a, a handful maybe not a whole lot that you'll see that stick around on if they can find an open spot on the river or something. But pretty much everything up by me freezes up because it's shallow enough that everything freezes over. So not a lot of places for them to hang out. Uh, Daniel said he missed the name, uh, missed your name, Joe. Tell him <coughs> your uh, guide service again. Keeper's guide service. He's over on Mille Lacs. My, my buddy living living him in here lives in Princeton, and uh, yeah, I've, I've seen him around on some Mille Lacs pages. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. He does a fishing report for for yep. uh, Mille Lacs and Winnie and uh, Leech Lake. So, um, good dude. Um, well, what uh, you got anything in closing? I don't think so. Other than. Ice is starting to come along, and we're not, you know, the flooding rumors are, we squashed them, I think, tonight, and yeah. Things are looking pretty good up there? They're looking all right. So you got, if uh, someone wants to come up over Christmas, you got some room for them? Uh, The week between Christmas and New Year's, we have maybe one night here and there. It's like very, very limited. We have some day houses available if somebody just wants a day house, but pretty much that week between Christmas and New Year's, we're pretty full. Crapser, is that your last name? Yep. Okay. Yep, Daniel. Um, it, it, much going on for spearing? Uh, you know what, Joe we, or Cody, we've been so busy, I haven't had time to even look at okay. it. Haven't, haven't, heard any, haven't heard much about it? Okay, cool. All right. Um, well, we've got uh, we had about eighty people in here to to ninety, so that was good. Appreciate you guys. Um, we're gonna try to do it again next Monday night. Might bring up another if if it works out. I might have another guy with us next week. 
and uh, I can fit up to I think six guys on this panel. So cool. So we'll. Uh, I'm going to work on on uh, trying to get um, someone up here too. And uh, if I can, if I can, uh, I'm kind of looking at trying to evolve this a little bit and maybe do a little trivia. And maybe we can give away some prizes or something at some point. Um, you know, do some uh, do some advertising. You know, for for you and for me, whatever. And and yep. uh, just try. No, we can figure that out. So, uh, yeah. What what do you uh, give give the folks a, a parting shot or a, a a parting shot here? Go ahead, and have a joke. I don't know. Come up and fish. You know, come stay with us. Have some fun. Yes, we're great. Marshall runs a great outfit. I think it's a great place to come fish. These nice houses, and like you said, we do the best we can to stay on fish. Clean rooms. Clean rooms. I mean, <coughs> I don't you know. know. I mean, I haven't been to every resort, but I think Marshall's got to be in the t top five. But I put him at number one. H handicapped uh, accessibility too. Handicap rooms. Handicap houses. I mean, yeah, we can do it. You so, tell us what you want, and you know, we, you know, my guys will go above and beyond every day. You may really do so to make it happen. All right. Okay. Well, hey, it's been it's been a it's been a good. Uh, uh, where are we at here? Hour and time go. Hour and forty minutes. So. Well, you guys take care, and we'll uh, talk to you later on in the week for the Fisher Report on Thursday, and uh, we'll go from there. So All you right. guys be safe, have a good one, and uh, good luck the rest of this week. Thanks, Cody. Have a good All night. Right. Yep, see ya. Bye.